water-soluble vitamins chapter 11. As we look at eating a variety of foods to ensure the needs of the healthy person will be met, we know that vitamins are not a source of energy. They only help carbohydrates, proteins, and fats to become fuel for the body and to work at their maximum. We know physical stress will increase the body's need for energy, thus more vitamins and minerals will be needed to help fuel the body with energy. The kidneys remove the water-soluble vitamins except B12, and it's easily destroyed by heat or alkalinity, breaking down the chemical bonds. The kidneys generally remove and excrete most of your water-soluble vitamins, so if you take a vitamin, oftentimes it will um, be eliminated in the urine and you see it um, as that bright yellow color in the urine after a vitamin is taken. Our B vitamins are mostly coenzymes. Back in the 1940s, the enrichment of bread and cereal was mandated, and they added back the thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin. 1998, the government then uh, required the enrichment of folic acid into foods as well, and we uh, have to eat then the whole grain products in order to get uh, the magnesium and zinc. When we look at the um, thiamine or B1, I have given a lot of that as a supplement through the years to uh, patients that I cared for in the drug and alcohol rehab unit. Many of your alcoholics are thiamine deficiency, have a thiamine deficiency, and we know they can obtain Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, which is an alcohol-induced malnutrition that is seen as confusion, kind of a rapid eye movement, and staggering. It reminds us a lot of dementia. And we oftentimes have to rule out, do they have Alzheimer's? or do they have this Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome? Our number one source is pork, and so we don't see a lot of deficiency in people that eat a wide variety of foods because it's also found in legumes, nuts, and liver. Your deficiency is not very often seen, uh, but it is called beriberi, which stands for I can't, I can't, and that is uh, from the uh, language in Southeast Asia where they eat a lot of white rice and they have a lot of thiamine deficiency as a result of uh, eating white rice that does not have much thiamine in it. Our riboflavin is also uh, considered a coenzyme. The deficiency is, a, is called aribinoflavinosis and that's where they have the cracks in the mouth near the corners, a condition called chelosis. We also see glossitis, or that tongue is very shiny and smooth, enlarged and inflamed and very painful for the person with a vitamin B2 or riboflavin deficiency. Riboflavin is needed for metabolic pathways such as starting the citric acid cycle and also the beta oxidation pathway in the body. It's very easily broken down by light, and so it's stored in, in opaque cartons. So when you go buy your milk at the store, there's a reason why milk cartons are kind of that milky white color to keep the sunlight out that very easily breaks down your riboflavin. Niacin is also a coenzyme that supports this, the fatty acid synthesis. The deficiency is pellagra known by uh, three Ds because it causes dementia, diarrhea, and eventually death. Niacin is kind of unique among the B vitamins because it can be made from the amino acid tryptophan, and enrichment adds niacin into the diet. So when they enacted uh, the mandate to enrich foods, niacin was one of those. Sustained release nicotinic acid supplements deliver the dose throughout the day rather than all at once. And with niacin, we're seeing a lot of uh, supplementation because it has been shown to pr uh, prevent type 1 diabetes because it protects those ins insulin secreting cells from inflammation. We also know that too much of niacin in high doses is used to treat high blood cholesterol or your LDL uh, cholesterol and the side effect of that is flushing and your patients that are cardiac patients started on niacin supplements to lower their blood cholesterol will tell you that they feel um, a lot of flushing and that will eventually uh, get better with time and so they need to be um, encouraged to continue taking niacin and the flushing will improve. I did have a student once in a nutrition class tell me that he would take large doses of niacin and then go to school because the school nurse would let him go home sick because he looked sick with all of that uh, flushing that he had. Our panathenic acid 
is found in a wide variety of foods. We don't see a lot of deficiency or toxicity, but it does affect the citric acid cycle uh, when we have a deficiency of that. Biotin is for fatty acid synthesis and DNA synthesis. Uh, deficiency is not very commonly seen, but a person that would eat raw egg whites over a long period of time can have a biotin deficiency. More importantly to us is the fact that many of our anticonvulsant drugs, drugs given for seizure disorders, uh, break down biotin. And so long-term use could cause a deficiency. And some of your patients that take anticonvulsants are recommended to take a multivitamin just to supplement the biotin that they have in their body. The vitamin B6 then, um, as you can see, is found in many food sources. It binds uh, with the white blood cells and red blood cells, helping uh, with the oxygen transport system. And as we look at deficiency then, again, some of our permanent nerve damage from high doses of B6 can be noted. Folate or folic acid is needed for normal red blood cell production, so we'll be uh, talking about the effect on the red blood cells. It works with B12 for biochemical functions and a deficiency can be noted with abnormal red blood cells. The bioavailability kind of depends upon uh, the stomach content and the folic acid source that is eaten. And we know that the body will absorb about 100% of folic acid on an empty stomach. That's why taking vitamins sometimes on an empty stomach improves the amount of absorption. If it's taken, if folic acid is taken with food, it's lowered by about 50%. Again, we need more during pregnancy and lactation. It helps prevent neural tube defects. Those have been decreased by about 70% since the discovery of folic acid in relationship to neural tube defects in newborn babies. It has been determined that about 400 micrograms of folic acid is needed daily before pregnancy and early in the pregnancy to prevent neural tube defects. Fortified cereals such as bread, pasta, flour, breakfast cereal have um, adequate amounts of folic acid added into them or fortified. And we know cooking destroys about 50 to 90% of folate. And so eating uh, folic acid in the breakfast cereals where it's not cooked or broken down is a positive thing. Our deficiency uh, can be noted with megaloblastic anemia, our heart diseases, again the neural tube defects, and the deficiency can be noted with patients that take large doses of sulfa, which is an antibiotic, our anticonvulsants, and our uh, barbiturates. So we want to help prevent uh, heart disease. It works best with B6 and B12 to decrease the homo homocysteine. And when we increase folic acid in the diet, we decrease that homocysteine levels or that inflammatory property in the body. Vitamin B12 is also called cobalamin. It has many functions in the body. It's often given uh, for people that have a deficiency of that as an IM or intramuscular every month. Many older people get that. Uh, working in the clinic, I gave a lot of B12. It's a red. I am medication that you have to give very carefully so that it doesn't stain the skin. It's uh, stored in the liver, so that's why once a month injections can uh, be given. You'll also give it in long-term care facilities because, as I said, it's more common in older people and seems like the nurses in long-term care give a fair amount of that on a monthly basis. Factors that impair vitamin B12 absorption or removal of the stomach. So any person that's had gastric bypass or stomach stapling would uh, possibly have a reduction in the amount of vitamin B12 that can be absorbed. People with atropic uh, gastritis or tapeworm in the stomach can have uh, problems. The intrinsic factor is produced in the stomach and that intrinsic factor is needed for absorption of B12. That is a question that often students will get on state boards as uh, for their nursing license. And so understanding the relationship of intrinsic factor with B12 deficiency uh, is important in the healthcare field. If megaloblastic anemia is inappropriately treated with folic acid, uh, the red blood cell production normalizes, but the neurological damage worsens and oftentimes cannot be reversed. 
Our B12 is found in a variety of sources, and as I said, nerve damage with megaloblastic anemia is something that we want to try to prevent. Our vitamin C is uh, needed for wound healing. The formation of collagen to help reinforce the connective tissue is important. So your patients in burn units, your patient that's have had surgery or have wounds that are healing need more vitamin C. And oftentimes I will see the wound ostomy nurse come in and order foods rich in vitamin C trying to promote the healing of the wounds or the burns or tissue damage that that person has. Collagen is a linear protein that's wrapped around forming a triple helix and that gives strength and flexibility. It's the most abundant protein that binds cells and tissues together. And so when you have more vitamin C in the diet, it helps um, heal that wound and decrease the amount of scar tissue that is seen uh, post-surgically or post-trauma uh, with wounds. Vitamin C is also an antioxidant that decreases the free radical damage in the cells and helps decrease chronic diseases, slows the aging process, and decreases the amount of cancer. To enhance the absorption of vitamin C, um, you need to take it with um, foods that are um, higher in like orange juice, and that's why you'll oftentimes see vitamin C um, enriched orange juice. And smoking increases the metabolic turnover of vitamin C. So a person that is a smoker actually needs twice as much vitamin C as the non-smoker because of the uh, damage to vitamin C from the smoking properties of the cigarettes. Our food sources are a variety of our citrus. We oftentimes think of your um, vitamin C in oranges and grapefruit, but also in broccoli, tomatoes, and potatoes. Our deficiency of vitamin C would be scurvy, and that was seen in a lot of children coming across on like the Mayflower uh, because they didn't have a source of vitamin C. And there's a video that I've uh, shown in class before that talked about the scurvy in the uh, sailors that were out to sea for long periods of time not getting fresh fruits and vegetables, and they would take limes with them to eat, and that's why they uh, were often called limeys. Toxicity is very rare, um, but it, fr it can cause GI distress in high doses. Choline, uh, vitamin-like compounds, these uh, help with structural integrity of the cell membranes. They accelerate the production of acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter used by the body. It's found in a wide variety of foods, and it is also a component of bile that helps break down fat made in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and uh, bile is much needed to help with the breakdown of fats. Some of our conditional nutrients, we don't see a lot of them, but cartonine uh, is used by the mitochondria to enter the citric acid cycle. Tyurene is an antioxidant. We also see uh, lipolytic acid as an energy production. It helps with the reactions in the mitochondria. So uh, what do you believe? We have some information here that says 35 percent of Americans surveyed said they believe vitamin supplements were necessary and women are more likely than men to believe that they would need a supplement in their diet. As we look at thiamine um, or TPP, it contains the B vitamin thiamine and two phosphate groups and some of our uh, syndromes of B12 deficiency, again, tingling and numbness to the extremities, a uh, change in the gait or the, how a person walks, and then loss of concentration from that. Megaloblastic anemia is a condition with red blood cells. Uh, they cannot form new DNA and they can't divide normally, so uh, your very large <coughs> mega uh, cells then are non-functional for us. Folate, the major components of that, remember uh, PABA and at least one molecule of glutamate acid. And our pernicious anemia is a result of an autoimmune disorder where the body destroys the parietal cells in the stomach. And as a result of that, you're not able to absorb B12 like uh, you should be able to. Vitamin C uh, needed for collagen synthesis and that role, very important role in helping the body to heal tissues. And then can we prevent cancer? There's a lot of research today saying, yes, there is uh, health benefits to eating a very healthy, wide-range diet. Thank you.